Nichiren Daishonin's reply to Miyoho Bikuni Gozen is a powerful testament to the boundless courage and compassion at the heart of Nichiren Buddhism. In this letter, Daishonin praised an extraordinary woman named Miyoho Ama Gozen for her unwavering spirit in upholding the Lotus Sutra despite facing immense persecution. Through vivid comparisons and profound insights, he revealed her noble struggle as the embodiment of the Buddhist ideal. Daishonin began by expressing empathy for Miyoho Ama's formidable challenges as a widowed woman with little support. He likened her plight to that of Bodhisattva Fukio, who persevered along the path to enlightenment while separated from her relatives and facing scorn from others. Yet even in the depths of her adversity, Miyoho Ama clung tenaciously to her Buddhist practice, leading Daishonin to proclaim, the Buddha on Eagle Peak surely perceives that you far surpass that nun, Mahaprajapati. This stirring statement evoked the tale of Mahaprajapati, the Buddha's aunt who became the first Buddhist nun. Despite attaining the exalted rank of Arhat, she was initially denied the path to Buddhahood because of her female form. As Daishonin vividly described, she transformed her woman's appearance and became a nun, abandoning her status as royal consort and honored the exhortations of the Buddha, yet she was denied the road that leads to Buddhahood. It was only through the compassionate philosophy revealed in the Lotus Sutra that Mahaprajapati's karmic impediments could be overcome, allowing her to fulfill her innate Buddha nature and become beheld with joy by all sentient beings. Daishonin used this narrative to emphasize that Miyoho Ama, by embracing the Lotus Sutra's teachings of universal enlightenment in the face of oppression, had far outshined even this venerated Buddhist foremother. Daishonin drove this point home by reflecting on his own past limited views regarding women's spiritual capacities. I had therefore thought that, although women might tarnish their names and throw away their lives for the sake of insignificant matters, they were weak in pursuing the path of Buddhahood. However, upon witnessing Miyoho Ama's indomitable spirit while propagating the Lotus Sutra, amid torment, he realized the fallacy of such thinking, now extolling her courageous defiance of societal oppression as surpassing even Mahaprajapati's achievements. Nichiren Buddhism scholar An A. Yanamura elucidates how, in praising Miyoho Ama, Daishonin repudiated the misogynistic beliefs that constrained Buddhist orthodoxy at the time. The very fact that Nichiren Daishonin accorded lay believers like Miyoho Ama and Nishinyo the same respect and encouragement that he gave to his closest disciples demonstrates his unwavering commitment to extending enlightenment to all people, regardless of gender or social status. In a profound symbolic gesture, Daishonin bestowed upon Miyoho Ama the name beheld with joy by all sentient beings the same name given to Mahaprajapati upon attaining Buddhahood. He proclaimed, even a nun who went against the Buddha's words received the name Buddha beheld with joy by all sentient beings. You have not deviated from the Buddha's words. The Buddha did not abandon the nun, his foster mother. Were he to abandon you because you are no relation to him, he would be a biased Buddha indeed. By equating Miyoho Ama to the Buddha's enlightened foster mother, Daishonin placed her struggle on the highest spiritual plane. Her persecution was akin to Mahaprajapati's oppression. Her resolve to spread the mystic law and defiance of it rendered her an embodiment of the Buddha's universal compassion. This notion of the Buddha's impartial benevolence became a central theme as Daishonin continued. Moreover, the sutra states, the living beings in it, the threefold world, are all my children. If we go by this sutra passage, then you are the Buddha's daughter, while that other nun was merely his foster mother. Here, Daishonin invoked a powerful metaphor from the Lotus Sutra itself, wherein all people are described as the Buddha's children deserving of equal enlightenment. He then raised Miyoho Ama's spiritual status even higher by portraying her as the Buddha's true daughter linked by an unbreakable karmic bond while Mahaprajapati was merely an adopted relation, his foster mother. From this karmic perspective, Daishonin asserted, the Buddha could never forsake Miyoho Ama without violating his vow to lead all people to enlightenment. As Nichiren Buddhist scholar Jean Reeves remarks, these deeply metaphorical passages reveal a strikingly modern, egalitarian interpretation of Buddhist teachings. 
in viewing Myoho Ama Gozen not as a woman but as a bodhisattva. Nichiren Daishonin anticipates a contemporary liberation theology in which enlightenment is not confined to the monastery but can be achieved in the midst of society as lay believers strive to improve their lives. In essence, Daishonin hailed Myoho Ama not just as a remarkable woman, but as a bodhisattva manifesting the Buddha's universal compassion through her brave actions to spread the mystic law while enduring oppression. Her struggle represented the highest ideals of Nichiren Buddhism, the inviolable dignity of all people and the irrepressible human revolution to attain enlightenment in the midst of even the darkest societal afflictions. With this letter, Nichiren Daishonin issued a resounding call to fearlessly uphold the Lotus Sutra's teachings of universal enlightenment, no matter how daunting the challenges society might impose. As he proclaimed in his renowned treatise, On Attaining Buddhahood in This Lifetime, Never seek this Bodhi enlightenment apart from your present mind and body. Never doubt in the slightest that every single being has inherently attained the Buddha's enlightenment. By indelibly linking Myoho Ama's towering Buddhist spirit to Mahaprajapati and the Buddha's enlightened vow of compassion for all people, Daishonin illuminated the profound truth that the Buddha nature dwells within every human being. In extolling this humble woman's indomitable struggle as the highest manifestation of Buddhist ideals, he revealed that the essence of enlightenment is to revolutionize one's own inner life of courage, hope, and compassion even when facing persecution or oppression from society. Myoho Ama's shining example, glorified in Nichiren Daishonin's majestic prose, stands as an eternal inspiration for all people to summon the same dauntless spirit of Buddhist humanism striving to lead impartial, empowered, and empowering lives dedicated to respect for the dignity of all humanity. While exalting Myoho Ama's spiritual odyssey, Nichiren also sought to encourage and embolden her resolve in the face of ongoing persecution. He reminded her that the challenges she faced were foretold by Shakyamuni Buddha himself in the Lotus Sutra's verse section, encouraging devotion. If anyone can uphold this sutra, I will look on him as if he were the Buddha's eyes. Excellent men are hard to meet throughout many kalpas. Now I have met you, and you are upholder of the guiding principles of the utmost way. In this passage, the Buddha foresees how upholding the mystic law will provoke scorn and violence from the ignorant masses. Yet he expresses supreme honor for those courageous individuals who will spread the Lotus Sutra's teachings despite such tribulations. As Nichiren Buddhism scholar Daniel Friedrich observes, the spirit of this verse section resonates powerfully in Nichiren's praise for Myoho Ama. In extolling Myoho Ama Gozen, Nichiren appealed not just to her example but to the archetypal role she embodied in upholding the spirit of the Lotus Sutra and carrying forward the Buddha's intent. Daishonin saw her, confronting the Buddha's prophecy, embodying the bodhisattva ideal in the most challenging of circumstances. By invoking the Buddha's own words enshrining the noble struggle of the Lotus Sutra's votaries, Nichiren elevated Myoho Ama's persecution as the highest proof of her Buddhist virtue. Her staunch spirit was the embodiment of the awakened life extolled by Shakyamuni. The more vehemently she was oppressed for her Buddhist practice, the more she exemplified the truth of the Lotus Sutra's teachings and the Buddha's praise for its upholders. This idea is further reinforced through another profound metaphor woven into Nichiren's letter. He portrays Myoho Ama not just in the image of Mahaprajapati, but symbolically likens her to the Lotus Sutra's spiritual embodiment the Buddha Prabhutaratna. A person who becomes a king is reputed to be one who in both past and present has observed the ten good precepts. Though the names of individual rulers change, the lion throne they sit upon is only one. Likewise, this name, beheld with joy by all sentient beings, is the same for you both. Here, Nichiren suggests that while the manifestations may differ across kalpas, the ultimate Buddha nature expressed through Myoho Ama and Mahaprajapati is one and the same the eternal dharma of the Lotus Sutra itself. Just as a king may come and go while the royal throne represents the unchanging sovereignty of the land, the shared name symbolizes their unified embodiment of the mystic law transcending time and space. This metaphysical symbolism echoes a famous passage from the Universal Worthy Sutra, which is the 28th chapter of the Lotus Sutra. 
This Bodhisattva Prabhutaratna can fill all worlds with his one body. He resides in the lands in the east and, by transformation, is present in the west, the south, the north, the four corners of the intermediate directions, here and throughout the entire world. As Nichiren proclaims, Myoho Ama represents the ideal of the Buddha Prabhutaratna, the universal, eternal, and unchanging mystic law prevailing everywhere in spiritual oneness while manifesting in myriad diverse forms. Her persecution and anguish emerged from upholding the same eternal truth as Mahaprajapati's enlightened path as beheld with joy. In the symbolic imagery of Nichiren's letter, Myoho Ama was not just a woman of 13th century Japan, but a transcendent embodiment of the mystic law's unimpeded power to unite all people's spiritual aspirations. In profoundly recognizing the universality and unity of truth contained within Myoho Ama's struggles, Nichiren revealed a core principle of his Buddhism that the life of Buddhahood is not some lofty, abstract state confined to the past or future, but the courageous struggle to manifest the eternal mystic law in the present amid all the contradictions of real life. As he proclaimed, Attaining Buddhahood in this reality is dot the idea that being deaf, dumb, avaricious or mendacious are all attributes of Buddhahood. Slander, perversity, enemies and hindrances, even carnal appetites, all are attributes of the Buddha way. By extolling Myoho Ama's worldly challenges as the consummate manifestation of the Buddha path, Nichiren enshrined the revolutionary message that Buddhahood does not transcend the realities of life, but exists in directly transforming one's sufferings into unshakable spiritual courage, compassion and wisdom. This is the profoundly human yet cosmic revolution exemplified by both Mahaprajapati and Myoho Ama to realize the eternal, universal Dharma not through ascetic rejection of society but through an indomitable spirit to prevail with humanity against all persecutions and contradictions. In closing his letter, Nichiren summoned Myoho Ama to continue upholding this ideal, regardless of how harrowing the path before her. Please understand this thoroughly. Before this letter becomes too involved, I will stop here. With these words, Nichiren exhorted Myoho Ama to fully embrace the truth that her noble struggle was an eternal, cosmic undertaking of supreme spiritual value. By urging her to comprehend rather than simply recite this metaphysical truth, he challenged her to elevate her life to the plane of cosmic Buddhahood to transform her sufferings into the universal struggle of all people awakening to their inherent dignity in the face of oppression. Ultimately, in his majestic tribute to Myoho Ama, Nichiren Daishonin revealed the universal empowerment available to all people the ability to become living embodiments of the eternal Buddha nature prevailing against all obstacles. In boldly proclaiming this humble woman's tribulations as the supreme manifestation of Buddhist truth, courage, and universality, Nichiren enshrined her as an eternal inspiration for all people to revolutionize their inner lives through the humanist spirit of Nichiren Buddhism.